Hi, my name is Bill Laboon. I'm the Technical Education Lead at Web3 Foundation here in Zug, Switzerland. And today I want to discuss how you can pick validators to nominate or stake with in Polkadot or Kusama. So you may have seen the staking screen uh, and been a little confused about what, uh, what you can do and how you can make a decision about uh, what, you, what you can uh, stake with. So before I go into detail about how you can investigate the different validators, uh, I want to explain how the basic system works on uh, staking in Polkadot. So I have other uh, videos and of course the Polkadot Wiki is a great place for a more in-depth explanation of this. But at a very high level, there are two roles really in the, the staking ecosystem of Polkadot. The first is the validators, and these are the block producers. Uh, and there are also nominators, those who provide the, uh, uh, some of the, the, the stake, the, the DOT tokens, uh, in order for them to get into the active validator set. So there are only a certain number of validators that can get into the active validator set. In fact, you can see here, uh, uh, there are 197 slots available uh, for validators. Uh, and the top stake getters will, uh, of the people that are vying uh, for this, um, uh, for, for a slot will be able to get in. And these uh, validators will rely generally on nominators uh, to provide stake to them in order for them to get in. You can in fact see there are 213 validators that were not able to get into uh, uh, an, a slot in the current active validator set. Uh, so that's what the waiting uh, 213 is. So the way that these validators uh, give their rewards, they are generally, uh, since when you stake, you know, as a benefit, you will get uh, uh, additional uh, tokens. Uh, and the way that these these uh, uh, the, the stake is distributed, the block rewards, is generally equal. So there is a probabilistic component to it, but generally uh, uh, you know, there, one validator or another validator are going to get the same block rewards uh, for, for a given era. Uh, however, the, after their, their commission, the block rewards will be passed then equally amongst uh, the nominator stake. So you can imagine if there is a validator that is in the uh, active validator set and has, let's say, 10 dot uh, stake to it, and you have 10 dot to stake, well, then if you nominate them, you will be getting 50% of the rewards. Whereas if the validator has 9,990 dot already staked to it, and you have 10 dot staked uh, to stake, then you will get 0.1% of the rewards. So if the rewards are equal, would you rather get 50% or 0.1%? Uh, generally, uh, you, know, you would want uh, to, to get more, but the, the sort of conflicting problem with this is whenever you nominate, if the validator that you nominate does something bad, stays offline uh, perhaps with a group, uh, group of others or uh, tries to cheat the system somehow, then not only their stake, but also your stake that you have bonded is at risk. So some random validator uh, out there that may uh, uh, not have a lot of stake uh, nominated to them, they may not have stake nominated to them because they, uh, are, they may not be a good validator and thus may have, uh, they may be likely to get, get you slashed. So Based on these sort of two conflicting uh, uh, concepts, these two drives of you know you want to get uh, you want to nominate those that don't have a lot of of stake behind them yet are in the active validator set uh, in order to get the highest rewards, but also to be uh, safe, uh, you want to probably to you know to verify that the you know these validators are good. So ideally, you would select the lowest staked validators that will still get into the active validator set, so they won't be waiting there, but who are also trustworthy. Uh, so you can obviously you know, uh, tweak these parameters based on your risk tolerance. Uh, so you know, a very conservative uh, way of approaching this may be to only go 
with the, the most staked validators uh, that you know personally, a very aggressive strategy uh, may be, but, but more risky, uh, may be to uh, find uh, whichever validators you think will just barely get into uh, the, the active validator set with the lowest amount of stake. But how can I tell, you know, like what is a good validator? This is, you know, just looking at how much uh, stake is behind them is a very, very broad brush uh, to paint them with. So I want to go through some of the things that you can look at uh, on, for a validator to see what they, uh, what, if you should trust them uh, or if they're the, the right validator for your uh, particular risk tolerance. So if you go to polkadot.js.org slash apps and then uh, click on uh, staking, uh, it's, or you can go to uh, slash pound slash staking, you will see a list of all of uh, the, the current validators. So right now, as I mentioned, there are 197 uh, validators uh, in Polkadot. There are quite a few more uh, in Kusama, but the same approach can be used uh, uh, for both. I prefer to look at this targets uh, screen. And targets uh, will allow you to nominate uh, directly from there. Uh, instead of just looking at them, this will uh, uh, allow you uh, to, to uh, 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 directly nominate from this page. And so, so we'll talk about this uh, most profitable, that's you know, maybe uh, uh, what you're interested in now, uh, but we'll talk about that a, a little bit later. Uh, the first thing that you probably want to look at is, does this validator have an identity? So you can bond some uh, of your dot and get a registrar to uh, vouch for your identity. So you can see here, uh, we have a few different uh, accounts that have set their identity and had, had it registered and verified by, some, uh, by one of the registrars on, on the system. So if you notice this you know, green uh, icon here, uh, either a green check mark, which means it is a, a source um, a identity, or a green, um, a green circle with a white uh, a chain in it, which means it's connected to some other uh, source uh, identity that's already been verified, but they basically mean the same thing. Um, that somebody has verified uh, the information here uh, that, that is listed, the email, website, uh, etc. So you'll notice if you look at different ones of these, they may have uh, different uh, information. Some may have put their Twitter on, some uh, have put their email, but generally uh, if you've registered and have like official information there, they're probably going to be uh, more uh, trustworthy. If you notice ones that have a, uh, a gray out, a, a name, but a grayed out um, uh, name or a connector instead of a green, that means that they have set their identity, but it has not been verified. So you can see here, there's, there's no judgments uh, on it yet. Uh, and you'll also notice there are some uh, uh, validators that have not set an identity at all. So they have, they're just using their raw uh, address. Now, if they have set an identity and it's somebody that you know uh, and trust, obviously this would be someone uh, that you'd be more likely uh, to trust than just some uh, random address. The second thing uh, to look at is the commission. So remember I said that block rewards are shared equally with nominators. Uh, however, the validator can set a commission, a percentage that they want to take of, of the rewards before they uh, send them out to validators, uh, excuse me, to, to nominators. And so this pays uh, for you know, the upkeep of the uh, the validator. Running a validator is a non-trivial process, and so it makes sense uh, that a, they would want to set aside a certain percentage uh, of the block rewards to go to them, the, the rewards rather to go to them, as a, you know, opposed to sharing it all uh, equally. Uh, so you'll notice that uh, this, this commission ranges anywhere from 0% uh, all the way up to 100%. Uh, so let's see if we can find, yeah, here we go. So 100% um, uh, commission means that if you uh, nominate them, you will get zero rewards. 
because 100% of the commission is uh, taken uh, by the validator. So why, why would any validator want to do this? Well, if they already have enough funds uh, to make sure that they stay in the active validator set, this is kind of a way of telling other nominators, of telling nominators, well, stay away, uh, we, don't, we don't need you here, we're just going to validate entirely uh, on our own. So that being said, having too high or too low of a commission could be uh, something uh, to be worried about. You know, if, if a commission is too low, then you don't uh, know if they are going to be able to, uh, to stick around. Are they actually uh, running this as a profitable business or not? So uh, that doesn't mean that uh, those validators with, with low uh, commissions or with high commissions are doing anything uh, bad, but it's certainly uh, something to, you know, to keep in mind when you're inspecting and determining which ones, uh, which validators you actually uh, uh, should nominate. One thing I want to note here is that commission can change. So as a nominator in the Polkadot ecosystem, you really should be uh, reviewing uh, occasionally who you are, whom you are nominating. Theoretically, somebody could gather a lot of nominations uh, at zero because they are offering zero percent commission, and then suddenly change that to one hundred percent commission, and you would no longer uh, receive any uh, uh, any rewards from from that validator, even though you're nominating them. So, again, just something uh, to be aware of. The next thing to to look at is the total stake. So you can see here of the validators in the active validator set. Um, the lowest stake is, has a 20,000 uh, dot, and the uh, average is at 25,773. So remember, the lower uh, the amount uh, of, of total stake, then the, uh, the more your stake will count uh, toward, towards them. And so if we see here, if I, uh, I'll sort by uh, uh, total stake here, uh, you know, sending, uh, uh, nominating a validator that has 100%, uh, well, 100% commission is going to cause you problems anyway, but, uh, you know, 37,000 uh, stake uh, versus uh, some of the systems, uh, these that don't have uh, a lot of stake currently, although may in the, in the next era, then you will... Uh, uh, you, you generally want to go for, for lower stake, but make sure that they do pass the, uh, the threshold to get into the active validator set. Another variable to look at is own stake. So this tells you how much the validator themselves uh, put up uh, as part of, of stake. So this is, you can imagine this is skin in the game. And since when you put up dots as stake, those dots are at risk if you do something bad, right? If you uh, uh, equivocate or stay offline uh, for long periods of time, uh, you can imagine that having some skin in the game, this would, having some more dot would imply a little bit more trustworthiness because they are also putting their own dot behind this um, uh, particular, uh, particular validator. So, the fact that uh, a, a, a validator may not have a lot of their own stake is not uh, automatically a red, a red mark against them, however, because they certainly could be nominating from a, a separate address uh, or something like that. So they could have their own uh, stake in, you know, it's their own skin in the game, their own stake. It's just not directly applicable or it's not directly visible here. But having this set is a way of, of proving to the world that your own stake, uh, you know, that you are staking your own validator. But again, uh, theoretically, you could have, and you know, we do see this. Uh, people use uh, separate nominating accounts, and so just because you don't see this as a high uh, value is not a reason to immediately uh, dismiss it. So you may also want to check uh, the, the the validator, like how they've performed in the past. So if you click on this. Um, a little graph mark uh, at the end. 
it will show you the error points they've received. So you receive error points for doing things like uh, producing a block or, or uh, uh, an uncle block or interacting with parachains. Uh, you can see how much stake, elected stake they've had uh, in, in the past and over time. Um, you can see that they've received rewards. Again, these rewards are generally going to uh, match up pretty well with error points. And if they've received slashes, so this, this, uh, these uh, red uh, dots, you can see this validator has not received uh, any, any slashes uh, uh, throughout, it, throughout the time uh, specified here. If you want to look at, so, so this can give you an idea of how they have, wor have done uh, in, in the past. You also can look uh, up at the slashes tab and see which um, uh, validators have been uh, slashed uh, in, in the recent past. So going back to the targets page, uh, you can sort uh, by uh, amount of dots that you will get, they anticipate you get for per era. Um, so you can estimate up here using amounts used for estimation, um, and then uh, sort by uh, how much profit you're expected to get uh, per era. Uh, however, this is just an estimate. There's no, you know, we can't know specifically uh, ahead of elections uh, how uh, things will sort out. We don't know how the different uh, validators are going to behave if they're going to be uh, you know, to be slashed uh, or do anything you know, go offline. Um, but uh, th this does give a good idea, and again, it's generally a bad idea to simply select based on oh who's going to provide who do we think is going to provide the, the most profit uh, because again you know depending on your strategy. Uh, and your risk tolerance uh, and your analysis of the different validators uh, based on you know, what we've already discussed, you may decide uh, that yes, this is going to provide uh, more, um, more, more dot, but it's, uh, you know, it, it is riskier. There are a few things you can do here. For instance, uh, limit uh, to validators that are already elected. They're already in the active validator set and only ones with an identity. So you know, if you don't want to see those that haven't identified themselves uh, in any way, then you can uh, uh, set these. So finally, once you've decided uh, which ones you would like to validate, what I prefer to, what I like to do is, is uh, click on the, the stars of the ones that I want. I'm just selecting random ones here, so I'm not trying to, to play uh, favorites. Uh, and then if you select these checkboxes, I like to keep these at the top, and then nominate selected, then you will have the ability uh, to uh, nominate uh, the particular ones that you've chosen. So we can see here, uh, I have now um, selected several validators after in inspecting them thoroughly. And at the next era, I should start uh, valid. I should start nominating uh, these validators and sharing in uh, their block rewards. So hopefully, this has been useful for you to learn uh, how uh, to make your own decisions on which validators to nominate in Polkadot and Kusama.